Hey, what's up guys? This is Sten from Saints Gaming, and today I'll be doing a tutorial on a gaming slash streaming PC. Um, so I'm going to go through all the hardware I selected for this particular computer. Uh, this is a, a mini ITX build, which means it's very tiny, very portable, and convenient for stuff like LAN parties or if you have events to go to uh, and things like that. Um, so I'm going to go through each and every component. Um, I'm also going to suggest some alternatives if you want to do a more of a budget build. If you were to pick out these parts by yourself, um, it would probably come around to 1800 Canadian, um, which I know is a little bit on the expensive side. So again, I'll, I'll, su I'll suggest some alternatives as well. So let's just go one by one through each part. So the very first thing is the video card here. This is the Zotac GTX 1070 Ti Mini. Um, again, this is a mini ITX build, so I had to pick something out that uh, you know could fit in the actual case. And uh, I'm not actually 100% sure if this is going to fit in the case. <laughs> so this is going to be very interesting. Um, <laughs> this is either going to be an epic fail or epic win, so we're about to find out. Um, I did see some builds online where it did fit, so I'm pretty hopeful, but people are saying like it'll just barely fit. I'm hoping there's no issues with that. And I'll start taking stuff out of the uh, boxes as well. Fail number one. All right. Are we going to keep like a tracker? <laughs> we need a fail. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's only the CPU. It's like... 300 bucks, no big deal. <laughs> nah, it should be fine. So this is the Zotac GTX 1070 Ti Mini, as you can see. So my next choice right now is the G-Skill DDR4 RAM. It's just 2400, so it's just the base clock. Um, Again, I got the red one because red means it goes faster, obviously, you know. Uh, so if you want to get red, if you, if you want speed, or you can get blue if you want it colder, you know, cooler RAM. Uh, I got 16 gigs, so it's two 8 gig DIMMs for this build. Again, if you're streaming or doing any sort of productivity work like video editing, um, you really do want uh, 16 gigs of RAM. If you're a gamer, you can get away with 8, but again, I'll go through that once I take everything out. Just putting this all this stuff off to the side. Now the motherboard. So again, you want a ITX motherboard. I went for the H370 uh, ASRock, uh, ASRock motherboard, I don't know how to say it, but uh, it's an ITX. And the actual nice thing about ITX motherboards is that um, they do have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. So if you're in a situation where you do need that, Maybe you're hooking up an Xbox controller, or you can hook it up directly to your computer, no cables. And again, for this, I just went for the cheapest one, to be honest. Um, I'm not planning on doing overclocking. Um, again, the H series of motherboards do not overclock. Um, for, for a mini ITX build where, you know, all the components are so close to each other, you, you don't really want to overclock anyways, just because um, of the thermal, uh, you know, limitations of such a small case. So we've got the I.O. shield. And then I also need this. This is a screw for the NVMe drive, which I will be using. Everything else, I don't really need. Processor real quick. <laughs> So this is the Core i7-8700 non-K. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, but it is non-K, which means you can't overclock it. Again, I had no intention of uh, overclocking it at all. And uh, let's be fancy and use an IO shield as a knife here. So this processor has six cores, 12 threads, so again, Really good for multitasking stuff like streaming, video editing, photo editing, anything that's really uh, resource intensive. Uh, for gaming, uh, it, it's a little bit overkill just because most games aren't 
Actually, I don't know if any games will take 12 threads, so... Um, again, this is more of a high-end productivity build rather than a pure gamer build. And we won't be needing the heatsink because I do have an after, aftermarket heatsink with me. Grab it right now. So this is the Noctua NHL9X65. I don't know who comes up with these names, but props to them, making it as confusing as possible. Um, this is a low profile heatsink. So again, we're doing a small ITX build. So we do need something that will um, fit in the actual case. I got Noctua is a little bit more expensive than other brands, but uh, they have like a five or seven year warranty. And just like the mounting system, they make it super simple. So I think it's worth it. Uh, this I'm just going to leave in the box for now because it does have a lot of uh, individual components like the back plate. Next is the EVGA, <laughs> well, GG CPU. Yeah, I know, hopefully it's not dead, but uh, oh well. This is the EVGA uh, G3, I believe. Yeah, G3, 550 watt power supply. Um, for this type of build, 550 watts is more than enough. Realistically, 550 watts like is enough for any build, um, just because components have gone so efficient, and plus I'm not overclocking, so. There isn't really much any uh, any point. This is fully modular as well, so I wanted it modular because uh, this case is really small, so I didn't want to deal with all the extra cables. So I'm just gonna box off the side. Um, and now the last component is the NVMe drive. So this is actually a, an OEM one. You can't buy this um, in stores. But the alternative for this would be like some, something like a Samsung 970 Evo. So this you just pretty much screw directly onto the motherboard. It's an SSD, 500 gigs. And that pretty much covers all the components I'll be going for. Um, now, like I said, this is a little bit of a high-end build. If you're looking to do pure gaming, um, here are the suggestions I would uh, make instead. So for example, with the RAM, you could go for 8 gigs instead of the 16. Obviously, RAM prices right now are ridiculous, so um, going from 8 to 16 would probably, sorry, from 16 to 8 would probably save you around 100 bucks. Um, so you could save some money there. Uh, another suggestion I would make is the graphics card, uh, GTX 1070 Ti. Uh, if you're playing like 1440p gaming, then you probably would want something like this, especially with high-end games like Witcher 3 or Metro or anything like that. But if you're playing more esports titles, you could get away with something like a GTX 1060. Uh, I would go for the six gigabyte one, um, and that would save you like 300 bucks right there. And last but not least, the processor. So an 8700 is, again, six cores, 12 threads. You don't really need all that for, um, for gaming. Like, you know, no game's gonna take advantage of 12 threads. So you could get away with something like an 8600. Um, you can get the K or the non-K. The price difference isn't too too drastic, but again, I won't be overclocking, so I don't need the K version. And that'll save you another 100 bucks or so. So if you were to get those components instead of these ones, that's total savings around 500 bucks, give or take. You know, you have to look out for sales as well, uh, and also rebates to try and get the best possible deal. So let's just get started with the build. And before I start, I want to give a shout out to all the Saints Gaming sponsors that make this program possible. Um, so starting off with the SRC here at St. Clair College, as well as the Al Alumni Association, um, and also Alienware, Subway, and also, of course, DX Racer, as you can see in the back, um, and also PC uh, Outlet for um, your, your PC parts needs here in Windsor. Let's start with the motherboard. So the first step, um, oh, sorry, actually, one more suggestion I need to make. Um, if you're actually, if you want to save on also uh, storage space, you could get something like a regular SSD instead of getting the NVMe ones. The NVMe ones I opted for just because it's ridiculously fast, like eight times faster than an SSD. But for gaming again, that won't really make much of a difference other than like loading screens. Uh, so you could get away with something like a Samsung 860 Evo, and that would save you another hundred bucks on top of um, the other five hundred from the other parts I suggested. So let's start with that first. Uh, I do need a screw for this and also a screwdriver. I remove this. Someone. 
with beans. I'm going to put this on the end. Okay, so this motherboard does have a M.2 slot. Get it here on the bottom. I it does have an M.2 slot. It's located right here, right above the PCI Express. Installation is pretty simple. You just insert it at an angle. Uh, so now the next step is the RAM. For the RAM, you pull down the slots, line it up based on. So it should be this way. So it should be right here, and then just clicks in. one okay and now you can pop out the uh, CPU socket over here and just comes out hope there's no broken pins see it pop over off there we go Now with the CPU, uh, it does have some notches on it. So you just look at where the notch placement is and then you align it. There's also an arrow on one of the corners of the CPU, which corresponds to a corner on the CPU socket as well. So make sure those two line up, otherwise you'll get broken pins and your motherboard's useless after that. So I'm looking at the notches. So the notches are at the top of the socket and the top of the CPU. I just put it in here and then line it up. And there it is. I close the hatch. Pull down the lever. There we go. Now the next step is the heat sink. I did get a low profile one. Um, there shouldn't be any RAM compatibility issues, hopefully. We're about to find out. There it is.
Ooh, look at that. All nice and organized. Give you this to help with the mounting. So this is the Intel set. They have one for Intel and one for AMD. Obviously this is an Intel board, so we'll be using the bracket for Intel. Now I do need to see the manual to see which hole corresponds on the bracket for this socket, which is 1151. That real quick, I believe it should be the middle hole. Better be safe than sorry. So this is LGA 2011, so it's not for mine. Okay, this is the one for me. So let's go back here. Backplate right here. I'm learning so much. This is some good <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> well, thank you. I should start an ASMR channel. Yeah. Making sure I, I align this properly so it does have. On the, on the graphic, it does have the two holes um, going away from the CPU socket. So just like that, line up the two holes with the screws here. Now we, so the cutouts are aligned and now we just turn it around. We have to align the cooler with these two brackets. So let me see where the CPU fan header is here. So the CPU fan header is at the top of the socket, um, further away from the CPU. So I'm going to align it so the cable has the least amount of room to go through. This, this way probably makes them have it like that. So I'm just, I'm just positioning it right now just so I know which way I'm going to mount it. That way. Now I want to put these here. These ones go. Yeah, so I have to use the thumb screws here for this mounting system. Again, so it's it's different for every CPU cooler, so it really depends on what you're using. So for, for this one, I have to use the ones like this with uh, two holes on both sides. There's different types depending on which socket you're using. Now I'll just fasten this. How many viewers, by the way? Most popular stream NA. Confirmed. Oops, sorry. I put the wrong ones on first. So it's actually the little plastic ones. My bad.
Wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, so now I put the brackets on depending on which way I'm orienting it. This way. Okay, and now I need to put on the uh, these screws. To fasten it down. Seven adoring fans. Damn, I'm so popular. Okay, now I'm putting the heatsink on top. Oh, actually, sorry, I need to put the thermal paste on first. These extras. Here's the thermal paste. So you only want to use a little, little drop of it. Um, you don't need a lot because it just spreads by itself. And spreading it yourself actually isn't a good idea. It's better just to let it spread naturally. So you just put a little like rice grain sized amount on there. A little bit careful here. That's pretty much it. Might be hard to see on camera, but the little dot in the middle. That should be okay. Even a little a little bit too much. Now we take off the little plastic cover. We just mount it on there. So we're orienting it this way, lining it up with the screws on the side. All the thumb screws are secure. Plop it down. The line properly. And yep. Now you have to use the tool that they give you. It's a strong uh, Allen key. There's holes here on the sides where you actually have to mount it using this um, screw. Let's balance as possible. Make sure you're going back and forth from each side, it's just you don't want to over screw one side. I think I should have. Might have been better to run the cable here first, so I'm actually going to take out the RAM right now. Both the RAM sticks. I want to make sure.
sure this cable is running to the CPU fan header before I continue. Gonna route it underneath. And I think it just barely should reach. Oh yeah, like literally like millimeters. <laughs> if it was like a millimeter shorter, it wouldn't reach. And that is CPU fan one, so it's the correct header. Sink a little bit, just so it's tucked away. Okay. Also make sure it's mounted properly. Tighten all the way. These, these actually have um, springs, it's spring loaded screws, so it's not actually gonna tighten like the entire way because it'll just keep rotating. Okay, okay. It, this one did, okay. Sometimes, sometimes it won't uh, screw in all the way, but this one does. So now we should be good. Okay, so let's pop, let's pop the RAM sticks back on there. Make sure the cable's out of the way. Clicked in there. On the next one. All right, perfect fit. Okay, so we're pretty much done on the motherboard side, and now we have to open up the case. This is gonna be the moment of truth, trying to fit everything inside. We do have an elite. Uh, 110 from Cooler Master. This is actually a super cheap case and it's tiny. It's like 20 liters of volume, something like that. Is this your first time building computers? That, have you done this before? I think I built like four computers, something like that. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Sorry? Uh, I don't remember if I built the stream computer. I know I've opened it up before to like uh, install the Majewell card, the capture card, but I don't know if I built it. I can't remember. I think Travis might have built it actually. Yeah. It's like the tiniest, cutest little case you've ever seen in your life. Look at that. You can use it for like weight training too. Open it up. Yeah, look at that. So tiny. Even like 
it's so small that they even had like the power supply here it sticks out a little bit just so they can have have it smaller Fuck champ. These are supposed to be thumb screws, but they kind of lied and over tightened them. whole thing just slides off. Wait for me. Okay, so um pretty much just a one one fan here at the front. Um and then all the cables here are obviously for the IO audio all that type of stuff at the front. But yeah it's pretty simplistic. I mean pretty much as bare bones as you can get. There is actually here a, um, if, you, if you decide to use SSDs instead of the NVMe drives, you can actually melt them on here, but I'm not using any, so I'm just gonna take this out because I don't need it. Get all these cables out of the way. This fan comes with uh, three pin to mullet converters as well, but obviously, I don't need that either. I'm just going to use the motherboard header. Getting rid of the mullet converters. Now I'm just gonna pop in the motherboard. I actually do need to find the standoff screws first. Should be maybe in the motherboard bag. Oh, they even give you a little bit, a few uh, zip ties. So the standoffs are these little um, golden pieces. I don't, I don't think they're necessarily always gold. So it screws on one side, and then you have another open socket on the other one. This is to help raise the motherboard away from the case, just so it doesn't cause any sort of short. You won't be playing Fortnite on this, right? Don't infect this beast. Uh, I may or may not install the malware known as Fortnite. I can't make any promises. Yeah, sorry, I, can't, I don't really have a good angle to show you this to you guys, but um, I'm just screwing in these standoffs on the motherboard tray. I'm heading. Yeah, I take care of all fun and games. I don't know who you are, but I'm assuming I know you in real life. All right. So actually, before I put this motherboard in, <laughs> I want to try out 
the graphics. See how this would look. Just, I think just barely it'll. Well, I don't know if I can't really show that. You see that? I need, I need to remove the the, the uh, brackets here first, but it should just barely fit in there. So let's actually install the motherboard now. I wasn't joking when I said mini ITX. Okay, let's let's also get these out of the way. PCIe. Brackets. What? Oh, you need a screwdriver. Octo's got me covered. Out of the way, I like, gotta make sure you put in the IO shield first. Obviously, I feel like that's like a very common mistake. People forget to put up, put that on. So IO shield on, pops in. In. Yeah. Now I'm gonna take the motherboard and align it with those there. Oops. I don't think it matters. Try doing a top down shot. Brian? Okay, cool. So we have it aligned. I'm going to try and get a top down shot. You take this one and We're just gonna move this over a little bit. Okay, so you see I have everything lined up here in the IO. Now we're just putting in these screws. 
So they are non-magnetic because obviously you don't want, um, I'm sorry, non-metallic, so it won't magnetize the screwdriver. So you do have to put them in manually. So I'm just lining them up and I'm going to screw them in here. So for mini ITX, there's only four of these on each corner. If you have a larger case or larger motherboard, it's going to be more. And the type of screws you want to use are these uh, flathead. That's just a little bit of a curved head. There's different types of screws in there, but these ones are specifically for the motherboard standoff. Okay, so I have all four in line. Now I'm just going to screw it in. I'll use, I'll use the little tool they gave. Just give it an angle. That should be good. Double checking all four. That's good. Okay, so now we do the power supply. Okay, keep doing over. This is the modular power supply, so none of the cables are actually hooked up. It's pretty convenient. You put it in here and slide it out. There you go, right above it. As you can see, it's a super tight fit with the uh, heat sink here. So I, I double checked to make sure all the dimensions were just right. Let's screw in the uh, power supply. And again, you want to make sure that the fan is facing the top because that's where it's sucking in all the cool air. If you look at the shroud for this, it has a top filter. You get the screws for the power supply. Power supply is only four screws, so pretty straightforward. It's all the way. Again, 550 watts for this type of build is more than enough. Like, honestly, you could have like a 8700K, 1080Ti, and it still would be more than enough. It's like today's parts are so efficient, it really doesn't matter anymore.
It doesn't seem like the bottom one's screwing all the way. Should be fine. Okay, now um, you need to decide which cables I actually need. So here are all the cables that come with the uh, power supply and realistically, so this is SATA. I don't need any SATA. I'm not using SATA drives. This is the 24 pin motherboard power connector. Obviously, I do need that. This is uh this is a vga 8 pin so pcie 8 pin connector obviously i need that as well i only need one of them though because my graphics card only has one 8 pin connector molex more sata molex here's a cpu so this is an 8 pin i also need and that should pretty much be it. This is just the power cable includes. This is another, if you have another graphics card. I'm gonna be plugging in. And again, this is a super tight build, just barely enough space for everything. Again, that was the whole point, make it as portable as possible. Let's start off with the motherboard power, which is the 24 pin connector. Could actually start with you could actually plug it in before you screw it in. Maybe that would have been a better idea, but uh it's okay. I think I think it'll be okay. Oh, okay. It uses this side on the uh, power supply side. So it's a split connector on the power supply side for this uh, particular power supply. Okay, and just click in. It is a little bit stiff. That's usually how the power supplies are. Should get a better angle for myself. All right, and clicked in. The other one. Clicked in too. Let's just leave this off to the side for now. This is the two, or is it? The, this is the video card connector. So let's actually just do the CPU one first. This off to the side. This is the 8 pin CPU connector. The other one's plugged in properly, and this one clips in to here. Let's leave this off to the side as well, and now the last one, which is the VGA connector, um, plugs in from this side, so then branches up to two in case you need to, but again, my video card only needs one. This VJ one. Put that on. Put that in. I'll put these off to the side. Now probably the most annoying part of the entire build. Freaking out the power LED, power switch, reset switch, and hard drive LED indicator lights. This is actually I might have to look this up on the motherboard because you have to pair it up on your right um positive and negative term uh 
terminals. So you have to take these out, see which one's positive, which one's negative. Okay. And it's actually written on the motherboard itself, which is which. So first one is the first one is power button. with the plus on the right side. So let's look for power button here, hard drive, power switch, here we go. Base it, uh, it'll say plus or minus. It'll have an arrow here on the actual switch. This is literally the most annoying part of building a PC. I don't know why they haven't made this process easier, but it has a little arrow there indicating which is the positive side, and then you uh, plug that in. Really I if I can remove this part, make this a little bit easier. Well, looks like this bracket here is non-removable. Oh no! Yeah, so power switch again. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to pop out the power supply. Normally you could do this with the power supply installed, but because the power supply is overhead, uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to take that out first. Does the camera person have Parkinson's? <laughs> he said yes. difficult yeah I'm not gonna be able to remove this screw here not threaded properly okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best here to plug these switches in Well, the power supply is above the motherboard, which isn't usually the case, so I have a lot less room to work with. Got it. Yeah, I got the power switch. Now, one is our LED. This one here. Separate connectors. This is honestly like the dumbest part of building. I swear. You see, case manufacturers need it.
Okay. So I've got the LED in now too. Uh, just to give you some perspective about where this is, it should be on on the bottom right side of the motherboard. See, what, can you like put that in? These cables right here, so they plug into the little um, metal connectors right here for power LED, uh, power switch, and reset switch, and also a hard drive LED. Uh, this one doesn't have a hard drive LED, so it doesn't. Okay, no, it does. Okay, so I'm gonna have all four connectors. So next, I uh, read the writing on here. Next is the reset switch. Here's the reset switch right here. Okay, I got the reset switch, and then the last one is our drive LED. All right, I've got all four cables there. All the four, all four cables here are plugged in for the front LED uh, connectors and indicators. Okay, well that was probably the worst part of it, and I'll the HD audio for the front panel. Um, the audio should be right here, right next to the right next to the M.2 cell, and obviously and Honestly, for me, this is kind of optional because I'm never going to use a front audio connector in my life. But let's plug it in for the sake of plugging it in. Right next to the M.2 slot on this motherboard. I think for the YouTube video, we should probably clip this part down. <laughs> okay. And then the last one is the USB speaker. On this mother, okay, it's, not, it's next to the, the twenty-four pin power here at the front. Station is correct. Again, if this was a much bigger case, this would be a little bit easier, just because you had more to work with. But uh, it's not the case. Think of, think of the bright side, guys. Once you get this done the first time, you don't have to touch it ever again. So it's just annoying the very first time. They actually put in a weird spot here. Usually it's by the HD audio connector, but not on this one. I can't get a straight connection because the power supply is in the way. Try my best here. Yeah. 
So all the annoying connectors are now plugged in. Thank God. And normally you could just cable manage this a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm gonna shove this here just so I can test out how well the graphics card fits. Like it'll definitely fit, just this part sticks out a little bit more than the rest. Yeah, that, that would definitely fit. Need this part. Oh boy. This is the problem with mini ITX builds and stuff like this. See what the most optimal way of doing this is. Woo! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just like magic. Shazam. This should be like an infomercial. All right, and if it, woo, no PC fail guide. <laughs> and this just clicks in. I should hear it click. This doesn't, that's also a possibility. Definitely in there, so. Wow, okay, cool. I'm to solder the case off. <laughs> Guys, you, just, you gotta have faith. You gotta believe. All you haters out there gotta subscribe now just because you didn't believe. Okay. Um now normally I would cable manage this, but I think for the sake of the video, I'm gonna worry about that later. Maybe you have the graphics. If you want to plug in the power for the graphics card 8 pin. Up here. That in for Let me screw it in right now. get an overhead view shot I guess. So this is the 8 pin power for that. And the graphics card just barely fits. But it does indeed fit. Now we want to plug in the 24 pin motherboard and the 8 pin CPU power connector and then we're done. So let's get this out of the way a little bit.
Again, the sacrifices you make for mini ITX are uh, sh showcasing itself right now. This angle. So you see it's plugged into the 24 pin right there. And there we go. And now. Gucci for 24 pin and now we're at the last cable the 8 pin connector the pin connector is relatively simple right here next to the CPU cooler put it together because it is two separate pieces because some motherboards only need one four pins. This one does need eight. Add it back a little bit. There we go. Make sure both sides clip in. Well, one side's clipped in, but for some reason the other one isn't. Hmm, it's weird. Let me just take it out real quick, just to double check. Definitely the right orientation, but um, won't clip in. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. So it's not both sides are clipped in, right here. And again, normally I would cable management or cable manage this, but I'd probably make this into a six-hour segment. <laughs> segment. Um, so normally you'd use these included zip ties um, to actually cable manage these and route them a little bit more conveniently. Uh, but for sake of this, I'm just gonna pretend like I don't care about cable management and just put it together as is because essentially it's done now. Just try your, just try your best like cable management to cable manage um, all these. Realistically, like, even if it's disorganized like this, it honestly doesn't matter. Um, oh, and also you want to, sorry, I forgot about this. This is the front head connector. Um, it's actually, you want to plug it into the three pin fan, he fan header right here. Okay. I'm just going to tuck it in here at the side and that's pretty much it. Let me just put on the case. Putting on thumb screws. Okay. 
Helps because it kind of um, should be one. There's nothing important. Like Linus Tech Tips here, just dropping stuff. One's having trouble threading it. There we go. Okay, perfect. You have your own little LAN gaming PC now. Look at that. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh my god, I never want to go through that ever in my life. Um, but I promise it's not that difficult. Um, it is a little bit tedious just because with the limited space you're working with. Uh, but once you do it once, then you have a gaming PC, LAN PC for however many years you want to use it for. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll have a clip on YouTube, hopefully a little bit more condensed than this. Um, again, the cable management is just hell. That would have taken probably another two hours. So it'd be a lot easier just to do this instead. Um, thanks for watching. This is Stan from Saints Gaming. And again, our sponsors, thank you to our sponsors for making this program possible. If you're not familiar with us check out saintsgaming.ca it's a varsity uh esports program here provided by sinclair college with scholarships um and a lot of you know a lot of perks and benefits and you get to meet other people um who are interested in esports um so shout out to our sponsors sinclair uh, src Saint, uh, the alumni association for sinclair subway alienware uh, pc outlet uh, and dx racer uh so stay tuned for our next stream, guys. And again, if you want to come and check out our weeklies, we do have Smash and Melee weeklies. What time? What? Tuesday, 7.30. Um, if, you're in, if you're into Smash Melee or Smash 4, um, come check it out here at the SRC building at St. Clair. And until next time, peace.